and welcome back to Fishing with David File on the Willamette River. It's February 6, 2016. It's a beautiful day. The sun is shining and the water's cleared up and somewhat. Hopefully this is a good spot for me today. It's a new spot we're going to try at the tip of Sovies Island. So we're going to give it a shot and see how we, how we do today. Okay, I've been here about 10 minutes and at this point I'm just starting to see the tip of my rod get tapped. So I've got a little interested fish. We'll see how serious he is. And uh, you know, he's bouncing the rod pretty good. I think I'll pick this up. He's gone. He's he's on it probably already. So I didn't tighten my drag very much. I should remind you guys that uh, pretty tight drag for sturgeon. So he's still tugging on it. Take a little slack out. Make sure I got no slack. He's tugging. He might already be hooked up. Set the hook. There he is. First fish of the day. It took me about 10 minutes. Hard to tell whether I've got a big fish or a small fish at this point. So far, he doesn't feel that big, but he may not seriously start fighting for a minute or two. He gets up closer to the surface. There he is. He's already up. First fish of the day. Anyway, this fish looks pretty serious, so we'll take the slack out. Still tugging. I'm sure he's going to follow this before I try to set the hook. And there he is. So he's hooked up. Fish started running up river. He's, I felt like he was pretty powerful, but the fact that he started running up river kind of tells me I got a bigger fish going. And some of you may wonder what this is. Uh, it's not a fanny sack, it's actually my life preserver. And this water is 40, oh, about 45 degrees right now. So you really, really want to have some life, life protection on. A, okay, we're gonna see him. He's eight feet under the surface. We should see some bubbles come up. There he is. He looks, that's a nice fish. He's a good, he's probably a four footer. See if we can get that on the video. Nice bright fish. Uh, as you can see, I'm starting to get tagged again. So um, I'm gonna fight this fish. If he's not very big, then I'll pick up and move up river, try a new spot, just for fun. Anyway, let's see what this guy gives. He could be a nice fish. Still tugging. I feel a little vibrations. Try to get slack out. And he's there. Now he's screaming line right now. Matter of fact, he made a nice little run. He may not be done. He's coming up river. He's come straight on below the boat now. Kind of bottom walking. Not ready to give this fight up. See some bubbles coming up, so he's he's right in. Actually, he's under the boat again. There he is. Not a bad fish. That's uh, about the same size fish. Okay, I think we're gonna pick up and move up river. Picked up some pretty nice fish right here. Um, we're still at the head of Solvies Island, and the Columbia River is straight out behind the boat. Um, we could go out and fish down closer to the mouth, but um, no reason to. There's fish all over in here. We're just going to give it another shot somewhere upriver and see what we find. Okay, I'm out at my I'm out at my second spot. And uh, my friends John and Diane just came by and said they're going to go trolling in the channel, the Multnomah Channel, and they're going to try to catch a spring Chinook. It's like I, I referenced that earlier, and um, I, I really got my fingers crossed for them. It is awful early, and the water is a little bit murky. Um, I would like to see it clear up a little more before I try to do some trolling for spring Chinook. 
Um, this fish has been coming out here tapping it on and off for the past five, ten minutes and um, not real serious. I'm going to have to finesse this one. So see if we can get, get this fish to hook up. Feel a little vibration there. A little bit of tug in, but he's come and gone two or three times so far just since I've been at the spot. So this might be the time that he's actually going to hook up. I still feel vibration. Oh, I think I just barely got him. At the end of that, I didn't take out enough slack, but I got something here, so I think I got a little guy, to tell you the truth. And this is fish number four. He's coming up. He's 40 feet, 40 feet down, and I'm in 66 feet of water right now. I may fish for one or two. Ah, that's not a bad little fish there. It's been about two, three minutes since my last fish, and all of a sudden this guy is just hammering it. Um, I, <laughs> I think he's pretty much hooked up, but I'm going to take some slack out here. I still feel him. Yeah, he's there. And he probably hooked himself up. He was swimming with it. He's quite a ways out. I cast pretty far down river, 100, at 130 feet of line out, and I was in 66 feet of water. The fact that I'm using a short leader, uh, something I thought about last week out fishing, and I saw several of my friends, and they're using about a foot long leader, and that's fine. You can, you can fish with long leaders, but I found you really don't Second need thing is. I noticed that several of my friends were using a whole herring or a whole piece of smell. And so you have a large piece of bait out there. And they're thinking, and and quite frankly, it would make sense that they're going to get bigger fish with bigger bait. And what I found is I get the same size fish generally that, that they're getting just using a half piece of bait. But that hook, you know, a small piece of bait, if they come up and they're nibbling on it, then they have a much better chance of actually getting that hook in their mouth because the bait is smaller. A smaller piece of bait they're going to put in their mouth to taste and they're going to get hooked on it. So my hookup rate is really good. It's, it's kind of rare that I lose fish and um, those that come up and start nibbling, I have a, a pretty good ratio of, of landing those fish. So. Those are two things, just little tidbits I thought I'd throw out there. Um, I'll get this guy unhooked and get him back in the water. He's about the same size as the last fish. Nice bright fish. Sixth fish that's hitting right now. Um, this fish seems rather serious. He's been tapping at it for a few seconds, so I'll pick it up, get some slack out, see if we can land him. Got it. 120 feet of line out, so there's a lot, there's a lot of slack in it. He's still tugging. I'll set him. Yeah, he's there. So I got this was fish number six. This fish is just about the surface, 10, 12. There he is right there. He's hooked right in the mouth. So I'll carefully release him and call it my day. Okay, I'm just going to summarize the day, February 6, 2016, on the Willamette River. And the water is starting to green up. Some of that mud from the upper tributaries is starting to flow out of here. And um, people are going to start fishing for springers pretty soon. Uh, my good friend John and Diane stopped by and said they were going to go into the channel and fish for springers and I commend them for that. Uh, John's a great fisherman, so is Diane. They will catch fish. Probably not today. It's a little early still. Um, water needs to clear up a little for me and um, today we got six fish and three at the head of Sovies Island. Came up above to the bottom of the Toyota hole and got three more fish pretty fast 
um, they came in five minutes, boom, fish, five minutes, boom, fish. Uh, whereas down below, it was taking 15 plus minutes to get fish to hook up. So anyway, just two different spots today. Um, nothing special, no, no special experiments. And I talked a little bit about why I use short leader, talked a little bit about uh, why I use small bait instead of using a whole herring. And, um, and I hope some of that makes sense to everybody. Keep experimenting. And thank you for fishing with David Pyle. I will see you next time.